Hello, uh, Adeline and Amanda. This In this video, I'm gonna go through uh, finding models on the internet and what to look for. I'm gonna introduce a couple of new concepts in terms of 3D printing concepts that will help you find better models, or not better, but easier models to print. Um, and it's generally what I do. So, so let's get started. The first thing we do is one of the, the main website, and there's, there's a bunch more, but the main one that I use is something called Thingiverse. And Thingiverse, MakerBot was an original 3D printing company that got bought by a big um, conglomerate. And this is sort of their database of things that you can download for free. Like everything from like Baby Yodas to, to, um, to knobs, right? So it's things, it's everyday objects. And you can see here it's artwork, fashion, gadgets, hobby, household, learning, Mod, uh, models, right? Animal models, right? Tools and toys. So let's do something really mundane like a replacement knob. Replacement stove knob, okay? So I'm gonna do that search. And the very first thing I'm gonna get is, so there's a knob uh, and you can see here, so in the first list of knobs, well, let's do something more fun. So that's mundane. Those are a bunch of stove knobs. Yay, right? Let's do, I know Adeline, you like corgis. Corgis. So we're going to search for corgis. All right. Now, first point, look at how few things there is for corgis, plural. But I did the search earlier, and if you just take off the non-plural, then you get a bunch more um, objects you can print. And so a lot of them are like 3D models. Um, I think one of them, this one, is, it uh, looks like that's a scan of the actual, a 3D scan of a corgi. This is like a, um, a cookie cutter, right? So, so let's go through, before we l click into one of these and look at what it is, let's, I, I want to introduce you to the concepts of likes and comments. So this model you can see is in color. That's, means that they're going to print with different filaments. You can see that a lot of people like it, and there's a lot of conversation about it. So the chances are very, very good that this model has been printed a number of times and is a pretty good model. Let's find one that no one has printed out. Like here, you can see that there are actual pictures. Like there's a picture, and then this one, there isn't a picture, but 84 people have really liked it. And, and we'll look into other, you know, this is not a 3D, so the, the, whoever created this didn't show us a picture of the actual thing printed out. That's kind of an indicator that it may or may not be a good model. You just don't know. Now, the fact that 84 people like it, it's probably been printed out a bunch of times, and it's probably okay. But let's come down to one that just got has no love whatsoever. Okay, so all these sort of have love. Okay, so you've got multiple pages of corgis. All right, a lot of cookie cutters. I'm going to try one that has, like, no love at all. I'm going to pause for a second while this thing... Um, all right, so, okay, like that has no image. Like you wouldn't even bother with something like that. All right, so you get the idea. So you want to do like a little, is this real in the ways, I mean, is it real enough that people have actually printed it before so you're not experimenting with stuff and having to troubleshoot? So like this one for sure, they printed it before because you can see that it's been printed and they have pictures of the actual live product. So let's go back here, and I want to show you the difference between this corgi and this corgi. I'm going to open up the simpler of the two corgis and this would be a good print for you guys. You can see that this is a 3D model and if you come in here I think we can click on it, load it in 3D and we can you can see that it is a um, 3D scan of this person's corgi and you can read um, a, a small brief summary. It doesn't explain a lot about it but seven people have made it uh, and when we go and click on the thing it's one item right so you would just download this, load it up in your in your print software, and create a print file out of it. So this is good because the reason why I think this is good is it's got a flat bottom. There are not a lot of um, well overhangs and really complex things. So let me show you what an overhang is. So this is an overhang. If I want to print that horse, I can't print in midair, right? I can't. You know the 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 printer can't put 
plastic in midair. So you have to, the program, the program will automatically do this for you, but you have to generate these supports. So you got to print all of this to get to, you got to print the support all the way up to be able to, to cover the horse's head, right? So here, there's no supports needed because um, even in those in those rounder areas, you wouldn't have some, you wouldn't need this. It's so gradual of a curve, you don't need to print supports. Um, and and this will um, make a lot of sense later. But you can get into crazy. I'm just going to show you an example of like a crazy support system. Like look at that thing. That thing's like crazy because it no, that part isn't flat at all. And so look at all that support that they had to to create to be able to print that out. So you you want to avoid situations like this. It's just complicated now. You want really simple objects that aren't going to require a lot of supports, right? And it, it will tell you in the summary if it needs support. So let me show you. Like this one says, another 3D scan, blah, 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 blah. It The base is flat, so it will stick to the print bed. So that's good news. And you don't need a raft. So what's a raft? So a raft is sometimes when you have really thin objects or like a, like a vase where it's like the base of the vase is really... Um, small but the vase gets really really big well that's not a lot of surface area to stick to the um print bed so you'd have to print a raft now the problem the, the problem with rafts other than they take more time because you're printing more stuff is you have to peel them off and then clean them off clean off the where they stick to your so this is the part right and you have to clean off that part so you want to avoid in this early stage you want to avoid supports and rafts as much as possible okay so that's a support the other one was a raft all right, so this is a really good model because it's short, it's small, and it doesn't require any supports or rafts. So super easy to print. Now, let's look at that other rocket ship corgi. Now, this one's really cool. Look at this. It's got different colors, which means that they had to print different. So they printed this at least three different um, times. The, the one with orange filament, the next with gray filament, and then the next with green filament. So you're going to see, as we scroll through here, you're going to see a lot of pieces that are going to be colored in different. So this would be like a much more advanced model to print, whereas this model is one color. You, you put it in your program, you, you create your file, and you're done. This color, this program has 10 different models. You can see, so I'm going to show you. So why would they cut? So this is like the eyeballs. This is half the corgi. This is the other half of the corgi. Where is that? That's the top half of the corgi. And the reason why they're doing that is you would have to run supports. Let's see. So if I spin this out, you'd have to run supports here, but you don't have to run supports for the tail. Whereas if you're printing the whole body of the corgi, let me exit out of this. If we're printing the whole body of the corgi in one shot, you would have to run supports here, 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 here. So by breaking it up into pieces, one, you can glue that other rocket ship piece in the middle, but also you can reduce the amount of supports. And when you reduce the amount of supports, um, it's less cleanup, right? And so you have all these instructions. So this tells you simple print as loaded should work out fine. It'll give you some instructions about how to do it. Okay. So let's, let's just real simple. If I wanted to download this print, I would come under things and boom, I would hit download and it would download to my uh, download to my downloads folder, I'd move it to my project folder and then load it up into my um, my um, uh, print software. But look at when I've got these complex models, and I'll download this one too. This has got ten different things, and so it, I have to sort of manage it. They're broken up into smaller pieces, so I can print them in different colors. Um, and I'll show you. I will show you how to do this. Uh, so I'll download this whole thing too, and we'll in the next video I'll show you how to. Um, how to um, unzip these and then load them into a print file, uh, into the, the printer software to, to create the actual file for your for your ender for your printer. Okay, bye.